Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Startup Idea Pitch Practice event. I'm really glad you were able to join us today. We had almost 1,000 people registered to this event, and we didn't do a formal count of how many countries, but I would uh, bet a lot of money that it's probably more than 50 or 60 countries. So uh, a great international audience. Let us know where you're joining in from in the chat here. I already see that uh, Elvin is uh, was uh, writing us from Liberia. Welcome, Elvin. I see Vincent from Boston, Ahmad from Zambia, Jesu from Luxembourg, Denmark, Bristol, uh, Colombia. This is awesome. A quick thing on the elevator pitch. So we got five minutes. All right. If you have not already downloaded the worksheet, there it is again. We just threw it into the chat. So you, my team reads their mind. I have an amazing team. Bitly slash fi dash elevator pitch. Okay. Download that worksheet because that is the format, the structure uh, that we will use for this uh, pitch today. Without structure, there is chaos, right? So let me get really quick to uh, what the goals of the elevator pitch are. Just from my experience working with, honestly, at this point, probably 100,000 entrepreneurs, it makes me feel old. Um, but the majority of people, when they first started first start doing an elevator pitch, they have an attitude of like, oh, I want to impress people with my pitch. So they think that I'm smart. Now, you may not think that intrinsically, but if you're using a lot of buzzwords and you're trying to use technical terms and stuff, then literally you are trying to make your sound, yourself sound smart. When what you really need to be doing is establishing an immediate understanding so that more fruitful conversation can follow. And we're all going to go into these tables in a moment. Right. And I'm sure you're going to hear some pitches from people. And a lot of the mentors are probably going to be spending a bunch of time just trying to understand what it is that this founder is trying to do because they're not being clear. They're using buzzwords. They're using terms that maybe they don't understand. All of that time trying to understand what they're doing is time that they're not actually getting feedback. OK, you need to speak as plainly as possible. All right. It's not about impressing people. Anybody can use big terms and stuff. The people that are successful are the people that can take very complicated things and make it simple. Right. And Albert Einstein said, if you can't explain it simply, then you don't understand it well enough. The second uh, goal of the elevator pitch is um, and this is the big thing that I see is that a lot of founders see it as so, almost like, OK, I'm going to get into a debate club here. And you're going to give me an, a reason why my idea won't work. And I'm going to counter and I'm going to I'm going to show you that my idea will work. Right. But again, when you are pitching your elevator pitch, it's it's not just to get an immediate understanding and maybe to start building connections. It's to collect as much feedback as possible. Every second that you spend speaking is a second that the person that you're pitching to is not speaking. And that is valuable feedback. OK, even if you completely disagree with somebody is saying, all right, just just take the feedback. That is value. All right. Because you know what? Maybe you don't believe what they're saying. Maybe you think they're an idiot, but maybe uh, tomorrow you pitch two other people and they say the same thing. You're like, all right, well, maybe that person's not an idiot. Right. You don't you don't know what you don't know as an entrepreneur. So don't offend your idea. Collect as much feedback as possible, because the value of any idea is not in the idea itself. It's not in this light bulb. It's in the evolution of that idea over time in response to uh, market and uh, and feedback. So what we have here is the elevator pitch template. OK, and I think this picture is a little bit pixelated. I need to fix that. Um, but essentially, you can download a high res version of it at bit.ly fi dash elevator pitch. And we're trying to make this as simple as possible. We took an approach here, Mad Libs. I don't know. I'm kind of dating myself. But when I was a kid, I had all these little Mad Libs workbooks and I would, you know, I I'd put in random words and it would create this funny story. Right. We're trying to do the same thing here where um, we want you to describe your business in a clear and concise manner. My company company name, or if you don't have a company, whatever, just say my my project, my idea, right? I'm developing something, a defined offering to help a defined audience solve a problem. And I'm trying to do this in some unique way, shape or form. Um, what a lot of people will ask when it comes to businesses as well is why now? Timing is incredibly important. There's no shortage of businesses that have been started too early or too late. Um, why you? 
uh, why are you or your team the right people to do the business and uh, and what is your ask? So let me get into these four things very quickly and then we will go back into the room so you can start getting feedback. So the offering, keep it simple, right? Speak plainly. Don't tell me it's a platform. What is that? Is that a wooden thing that I can go stand on over there? Or is it actually, what are you trying to say? It's an e-commerce website or a mobile app, okay? Speak simply. If you think about just sentence structure, if you say something in your third word of a sentence that confuses somebody, every other word after that is going to compute, is they're still going to be thinking about that third word that confused them, right? Speak simply. So don't say a platform, say an e-commerce website. Don't say an AI assisted hiring engine, right? Just say, okay, it's a subscription service. Um, the second thing is the audience. So a lot of, one of the biggest issues that people will have here is that you just use very benign or just large terms, right? Don't tell me that your audience is women. That's roughly the half of the women, the half of the population of the planet, right? Not exactly uh, defining your audience there. And don't also tell me that your audience is a small business. You don't sell a small business, right? So for anybody here in attendance that's trying to uh, build a B2B product, you have to drill down into the specific person at a business whose KPIs align with the product that you are building, right? So don't, telling me you sell to a small business is completely useless. Telling me that you sell to an HR manager uh, at, a, at software companies in France or something like that is, is much more useful. The third thing is, okay, what problem are you trying to solve? If you're not trying to, pro to solve a problem for a customer, then to be honest, you, you kind of already lost, okay? At the most basic thing, a startup, solves a problem for a customer. And you know what? Nobody wakes up in the morning thinking, they don't wake up saying, I wanna utilize AI and machine learning to surface diamonds in the rough, right? And this is a term or something along these lines that we'll usually see, right? So if we go back to this last example, where it's an HR manager at a software company in France, they're not waking up and saying, I wanna utilize AI and machine learning. Uh, to surface diamond in the rough, they're probably waking up saying, I want to quickly, quickly find the best engineering candidates to hire, right? Speak plainly and speak to the actual problems that the customer has and resist the urge to loop in your solution, right? That's what this left example here is meant to describe. It's way too many people loop in their solution when describing the problem. That's not the problem. That's not what people wake up worrying about. We have enough problems uh, that we have in our lives where we don't wake up thinking I need to utilize AI and machine learning to surface diamonds in the rough, <laughs> right? Uh, the secret sauce is another word for unique value proposition, differentiator. Um, but basically that is what makes you unique and, and ideally what makes your results unique. So um, again, speak plainly uh, and talk about why uh, what you're doing is probably unique and why you think that this is something that uh, can just have impact versus everything else on the market. The why now? So as I mentioned before, timing can make or break a company. Most uh, humble entrepreneurs will very much acknowledge that timing and luck were a very large part of their success, all right? There were plenty of Googles before Google. There were plenty of YouTubes before YouTube, right? It was just a, a confluence of, of factors at that point, whether it was broadband or whatever that came to play where this idea was just perfect for this point in time, all right? Um, that is something that you definitely want to look at. And then finally, great companies start with great people. This is one of the founding principles of the Founder Institute. This is why we use social science admissions uh, as our main form of admissions in the Founder Institute programs, um, because it is the people that create the value. So why are you or your team the right people to execute on this? And finally, the ask. If you aren't asking for something every time you talk about your business, your family, okay? Because every single person it doesn't matter what your impression of them is or whatever. They're a potential connector, okay? They may know somebody who even may know somebody who may know somebody. Um, but at the very least, they're a source of feedback, okay? And again, as an entrepreneur, all of the value is created in the evolution of that initial light bulb into something that 
fits the market that you can sell at a product, right? It's all in that evolution. So any opportunity for feedback that you're not taking is a wasted opportunity. Always be asking. All right. Thanks, everybody. You can learn more about the Founder Institute at fi.co. Take care.